absolutely love the intensity of the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. A great time of year to enjoy uh, a tune like that. Today we are going to put the cap uh, on our series test here. We're going to finish off with the ratio test in, and, and we are finishing with a bang. I think this is the most popular one going forward and, and is perhaps, I, I truly, truly, I know this sounds weird, but I truly enjoy using and uh, working through the ratio test. I think, I think you will too. And it's a great test. If your particular series that you're working with possesses either um, some factorials and or some exponential terms, okay, either one of them or, or a combination of the two, this is a great, great test for that. And uh, just real briefly before we get into the nuts and bolts of the ratio test, I want to review exactly what our toolbox looks like as of this moment. Um, I want to continue to encourage you to apply the nth term test instantly to every series that you encounter. And if that limit doesn't equal zero, it instantly diverges. Um, we also then, we had the geometric series, and we also had the telescopic series. And those were a very interesting series because we actually could find the, the sum. Besides just saying they were convergent, we, could, we were able to find the sum. Um, then what came next? Then we did, uh, we worked with some P series, and we said uh, we want the P values to be Oops, having a little trouble spelling here. We want the p-values to be as large as possible. We also worked through the integral test, and we said if as long as the integral from 1 to infinity converges, then the series also converges, although not necessarily to the same value. We worked with the direct comparison test. Uh, we usually just call it the comparison test. And of course, if the, if the larger series converges, the smaller has to converge. Or if the smaller one diverges, then the larger one also diverges. And then uh, we got into the alternating series last night. Um, and then we're going to finish with the ratio test. Okay, so um, real quickly here, we're just going to practice simplifying some real basic expressions. And if you feel comfortable simplifying these next two examples, you're going to be in really, really good shape today. So question number one, I want you to take the quantity n plus 1 factorial divided by n factorial. And do you feel comfortable simplifying that? Um, we could express our numerator as n plus 1 times n factorial. And you'll notice that these simply cancel out and we're left with n plus 1. Okay, the other one that we're going to see a lot of is in the exponential form. For instance, if I gave you 2 to the n plus 1 power divided by 2 to the nth power, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract those exponents from each other. Uh, and then that just gives us 2 to the first power. So if you feel good about simplifying those two basic expressions, again, you're going to be very, very successful today with the ratio test. Just a quick recap with basic series thoughts here. We said base, um, as we expand this out, it's the first term plus the second term plus the third term plus da 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 plus the nth term plus the n plus first term plus da da da. Of course, we're going all the way to infinity. And we said, you know what? In order for this series to even have a chance of converging, the terms have to get smaller and smaller and smaller and approach zero. And even then, it's, there's no guarantees. That just means it's got a chance. And so as these terms get smaller and smaller and smaller, we could definitely say that the n plus first term is smaller than the nth term. Okay. And today, the ratio test implies that we are going to study the ratio of these two. And it's all about, okay, what's happening as n gets huge. Okay, and then what's the ratio of the n plus first term compared to the nth term? Okay, and that's what it's all about today. And naturally, if, if the n plus first term is smaller, then when we divide those two, we should be getting something smaller than 1. And uh, we're basically comparing like the 1 millionth term to the 1 million and first term and asking ourselves, is the ratio smaller than 1? So let's jump into the nuts and bolts of this, this particular test. And um, let's see, there's basically three conditions that we have to master. Number one says, if the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of that n plus first term divided by the nth term, hopefully my subscripts look like subscripts. Um, if that limit turns out to be smaller than one today, we are then going to say that that series definitely converges for sure. The second possible outcome says, okay, and you could probably guess this, if the limit turns out to be greater than 1, 
in other words, that kind of implies that the terms aren't decreasing, they're actually increasing, then we could say for sure that the series definitely, definitely diverges in that case. And then the third one's kind of a peculiar one, and believe it or not, you're, we're going to get this more th than you'd expect. It says, if that limit turns out to actually equal 1, okay, at this point, we say that the series, as far as its sum, is you know inconclusive as to whether it converges or diverges. So it's inconclusive. And that just means we've got, well, the ratio test didn't work. Let's go back and start over and try to pick a different test. And our, one of our biggest ob obstacles today is just going to be setting up the basic problem. When they want you to calculate the n plus first term, all you're going to do is you're going to substitute the quantity n plus 1 in for every n you see in the original series. So that's all it is. We're just going to substitute the n plus first term in. So for instance, if I gave you the series, and I'm just making up a real generic one, uh, you know, if I said, um, oh golly gee, uh, e to the 2n power, basically what you see in front of you is the nth term. Okay, what's been given to you is the nth term. And then you also have to build the n plus first term. And what we're going to do is we're going to substitute the n plus 1 strictly in for the n. And then we could distribute the 2 and get e to the 2n plus 2. So all it is is a substitution. We've got four real beautiful examples to work through here tonight. Our first one being no exception. Um, and we're going to have 2 to the nth power divided by n factorial. Now here's a good example, and I want you to get in the habit of kind of having, you know, some, some real strong instincts as to whether this is going to converge or diverge right off the bat. And um, we've, we've talked about the factorials being so powerful, and that when you put a factorial in the denominator, it almost guarantees that the series is going to end up converging because that denominator is getting so, so large. Um, however, there is no such thing as the factorial test. Uh, you know, students in the past have tried to create their own, but it is not an official test. We cannot just say there's a factorial in the bottom and therefore it converges. So... Um, if I saw this series on a test, I'd get very excited and jump all over the ratio test instantly because it has both characteristics that I look for. It's got both factorials and an exponential term in it. And so I'm going to just go straight to that um, ratio test. And the nth term, like we said, is the term that's sitting right under your nose, the one that's been given to you. And then the n plus first term, we're going to go ahead and substitute an n plus 1 in for each of the n's. Notice the parentheses there before the factorial sign. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up my limit. And they said, okay, evaluate the limit as n approaches infinity, absolute values. And we're going to put the n plus first term on top. And then we're going to divide by the nth term. Now here's what I'm doing is I'm showing more work right here than I normally would. A lot of times what I'm going to do, instead of dividing by the nth term, I'm going to instantly multiply by the reciprocal of the nth term. Okay, did you catch that? Um, I'm going to instantly multiply by the reciprocal of that nth term typically. So a lot of times what's going to happen is I'm going to go right to this move right here, right off the bat. Okay, n plus first term times the reciprocal of the nth term. Okay, I'm going to go right there. I hope you feel comfortable doing so. Now it's just a matter of cleaning things up. We already said, uh, let's see, this bear kills that bear, and we're left with the quantity n plus 1 without the factorial. We That's the same kind of simplifying we saw earlier. Um, and then we could also say, well, if I subtract the exponents on these exponential functions, I'm going to be left with 2 to the first power. So we start to clean this up a little bit. Uh, what I like to do, anytime I have a constant, I like to pull it out front. Whoops, got to hit the pen. So I'm going to pull the 2 out front that was in my numerator. Okay, all it was is this bear here went there. Uh, absolute values, what's left? After I pulled the 2 out, I just have a 1 in the numerator. I've got a n plus 1 in the denominator. I'm going to evaluate this limit, see what it turns out to be. Um, the value of this limit right here small over large, so it has a value of 0. Again, it's 2 times 0, which turns out to be 0. And because that's smaller than 1, anything smaller than 1 means that our series now converges.
There it is, our first ratio test. Our second example looks a little more intimidating at first glance here. Uh, let's see, we've got n squared times 2 to the n plus 1 power already and all over 3 to the nth power on the bottom. So the nth term is the one that's sitting right under your nose, the one that's been given to you. So I'm going to jump right in and say, well, the n plus first term is the quantity n plus 1 squared, 2 to the now, let's see, it'd be n plus 2 now, all over 3 to the n plus 1. Okay, so that's what my n plus first term looks like. And sometimes I try to write that off on the side before I jump in and start evaluating the limit and all that fancy stuff. So here we go. The ratio test says, whoa, 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 what's going on? Call, calling time out here. Uh, let's see if we can regroup. Let's see, uh, pen, okay. Hopefully this works. It'll change colors. Okay, the limit as n approaches infinity, okay. Um, I'm gonna go to the n plus first term. Hopefully we squeeze this all in there. n plus two. 3 to the n plus 1. Now we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the nth term, aka the one that was given to us. Okay, close off the absolute values. And here's the fun part. There's so much stuff to clean up. Um, let's see, if I subtract, uh, if I take these exponential terms and I subtract those exponents, let's see, n plus 2 minus the quantity n plus 1, I think I just get 2 to the first power. And then same thing here, I think we end up with 3 to the first power. And then I cannot cancel anything out of those n squareds or anything like that. So clean up a little bit, I'm going to pull out my coefficient of 2 thirds, then we've got the limit, and inside of there is n plus oops, 1 squared, all over n squared. Now, as far as evaluating that limit, you're more than welcome to foil out the numerator, but I think that's a waste of time. You can at least visualize in your mind that the biggest term would be an n squared on top. We've got an n squared on the bottom. So that that limit strictly has a value of 1 because it's same over same. Um, a 2 thirds times a 1 turns out to be 2 thirds. And because that's smaller than 1, we could say that this series definitely converges according to the ratio test. Our third example is um, got an alternating component to it. We've got the negative one to the nth power. And, and that's really, the ratio test handles that quite nicely because what happens is we have these absolute value signs embedded around the ratio. And so basically that negative one to the n becomes irrelevant. And we're just gonna jump in and say, okay, here's the n plus first term times the reciprocal of the given nth term and we're going to try to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to rearrange some of the terms. And I'll try to go nice and slow here so that it, it makes a little bit of sense. But I'm going to rearrange it so the, the radicals are lined up. And then, the, I guess, the non-radicals, for lack of a better description, are also lined up. I could then rewrite that first one a little bit. And we could say one big radical, n plus 1 divided by n. And now um, we're going to analyze each one of these individually. We could say that, let's see, this first term, you know, as far as the power fight goes, is same over same. So we're getting a 1 there. And then this one's also same over same. So our power fight's giving us another 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Now what's interesting is we said whenever the ratio test equals 1, it's now inconclusive. So we cannot decide whether this series converges or diverges. Now, I hope that most of you at home are sitting there wondering why in God's green earth I didn't just use the alternating series test, okay? And I, and I tried to kind of ignore that just so I could work through the ratio test and show you an example of when you might get one for, for a ratio and therefore be inconclusive. But yeah, I would strongly encourage you to not use the ratio test on this particular one in the future if you saw this on a test. Um, just say to yourself, well, because it's an alternating series, I just need to evaluate the, the limit of the given nth term. And it's a fairly unusual one, but I think you'd agree that the numerator is growing slower than the denominator. We could make the argument that it's small over large, I believe, and, and therefore because the limit equals zero, that's smaller than one, it converges according to the nth term test. We'd also have to verify that the n plus first term is smaller than the nth term, but that's an easy argument to make. Again, you know, the more series we do, the stronger uh, your instincts become, and I want you to become hopefully more and more confident with your instincts and, 
And I hope as you start this problem, you have a strong suspicion that this one diverges. And really what it boils down to is it's just a matter of proving it diverges and confirming that strong hunch that you had. And so as we get ready to get started here, the limit as n approaches infinity. Okay, the n plus first term says n plus 1 quantity factorial. And then we got to be really careful here. Remember, we are substituting an n plus 1 in for n. Okay, so I want to put parentheses around the n plus 1 so that I end up distributing that 2. Now we're multiplying by the reciprocal of the given nth term. And it's just a matter of simplifying it. And I'm going to go nice and slow here because I want to distribute that 2 just so we could all see what it looks like. 10 to the 2n. Okay, here comes the fun part. Time to start canceling some terms here. Okay, let's start with the factorials. And we can just get n plus 1 factorial. If that doesn't quite make a ton of sense to you, go back and look at one of the first slides we did where we expanded out the n plus 1 factorial and got things to cancel. And then on the bottom, if I subtract the exponents, I end up with a 10 squared on the bottom. Okay. And now, what I always like to do is I always like to, anytime I have a constant, I like to pull that out front. So 1 one hundredth is my coefficient. Trust me, that doesn't seem like a big deal, but I think that's going to help a lot um, two weeks from now after Christmas when we get into the what's called the power series. And all I have here is n plus 1 over 1. That is certainly large over small. So when we talk in terms of this limit, the value of this limit right here is infinity. Multiplying by 1 one hundredth, doesn't really change things. You still have infinity that's greater than 1. Therefore, this series diverges. And we have proven and confirmed the suspicion that we had at the beginning. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the last um, test that we're going to use to prove that a basic series is convergent or divergent. Um, it's another tool in our toolbox. Works great on factorials and exponentials. And we're going to get a lot of practice with it tomorrow. Uh, I think one of the big things is our organization and our handwriting have to be impeccable tomorrow. Very flawless, accurate, and detailed. And uh, we're on the path to success. We'll see you guys tomorrow.